stop stop broadcast first, then start recording. Start broadcast. Stop broadcast. I did. Start record. I did. And then start broadcast. Bitcoin show. Hello, this is uh, I'm Bruce Wagner, and <laughs> this is Edward Gell. Hi, I'm Ed. <laughs> we are live oh. with Mark. Carp How do you say your last name? Carpanis. It's French, right? I'm uh, I'm Adam. Uh, Adam. Mark oh. is over here. Sorry, he's taking a call right now. Okay. <laughs> uh, Mark's last name is pronounced Carp Carpanis. Carp okay, so I'm, I'm not the only one. Carpanis. So okay, we're Carp gonna call him Mark. So. Anyway, <coughs> we're uh, broadcasting live. Uh, this is uh, 10 p.m. Eastern Time, New York Time, on uh, June 20th. Two a no, it's 11 a.m. your time. I see the sun's just coming up, right? So we can <laughs> we finally get to put a um, face uh, with a name. So um, I guess uh, Mark's taking a call right now. But uh, we uh, let's see. They're not getting any volume. Can you hear me, uh, Chris? Can you put the headphones on and tell me if you hear me coming through? You can hear me loud and clear? Okay. How about chat? Can hey. you guys hear me? Nope. Louder. They need it louder. <laughs> they say they can't hear it. And now it's too loud. All right. Whatever. Okay. We'll see. Somewhere in the middle. Hopefully. Who knows? Okay. You can hear me good. Okay. So, um, <coughs> Adam, since we spoke last night, what's, uh, what has changed? Uh, not much. Been working hard. I know Mark, uh, Mark was saying that today what we're hoping to to accomplish is get uh, users migrating back into their accounts, getting uh, getting new passwords set up, that kind of thing. Uh, we probably won't be trading today, mm -hmm. um, but we're just working at uh, getting getting people migrated and then getting a new backend in place. So mm -hmm. um, ETA on that, I'd have to ask Mark, but mm -hmm. it's coming. Great. Okay. So wh what's your uh, position there, if, if, as people would ask? What's, what's your role at Mt. Gox? Yeah, so I was hired on uh, at least two and a half weeks ago to, uh, to just start taking emails. Uh, we saw, Mark saw a huge influx of emails coming in just suddenly. And uh, I was hired on just to try and handle and mitigate that. Um, unfortunately, we haven't been able to keep up. I think everyone knows. So um, right now, email, I guess it's turning into some sort of uh, other role now where I'm talking to you guys. But uh, yeah. Primarily just communication. Okay, so you just you were just hired on two weeks ago, so this is all new. <laughs> you were thrown right into the into the to the fire into the fire. Yeah, with us, definitely. Huh? I I actually found Mark on uh, IRC, so mm -hmm. was interested in getting involved, and uh, yeah, was lucky enough to have an opportunity. So okay, are you, are you an American guy? You sound American. Uh Canadian. Canadian, same thing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> one of the states. So, <laughs> all right, cool, cool. And so, were you already living down there or in, or in Japan or? Uh, yeah, I've been right? living here for ah, maybe eight months now, so mm -hmm. uh, not, not that long. Still getting accustomed to lifestyle. But. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. All right, so um, let's see. We've got a, a load of questions. Um, probably people want to hear it directly from Mark, but he, is he still on the phone there? Mark, you. Yes. Available. He's available. There he is. Hey, Mark. Nice to hey. see you. <laughs> Mark. Mm -hmm. To put a face with the name. So, um, <laughs> the first question from the chat room is, are you Satoshi? <laughs> Can you hear me? Nope. No, I <laughs> had the not. first question from the chat room was, are you Satoshi? Are you Satoshi? <laughs> no, I'm not Satoshi. <laughs> Do you look no. like Satoshi? <laughs> not even close. Well, you look a little bit like a Satoshi. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> you're in Japan. <laughs> we know Satoshi's from Tokyo. <laughs> you ever met him? No, just kidding. So, um, what's the uh, what's the latest status with Mt. Gox right now? 
give us the lowdown on what's happened. Okay, the status right now is we are working on the account claim page. So we will allow people to make claim for their account by providing uh, information like, for example, what the last uh, account they added money from. Mm -hmm. We will review the claims if there is more than one claim for one account, which may happen or may not happen. And we'll allow people to get a new password and maybe email if they want assigned to their account. Mm -hmm. uh, for trying to see what we will do for the more complex case. Uh, in the worst case, we'll ask for people to send us uh, some notarized proof they're actually the owner of the account, like a bank statement or anything that can show they are the owner of the account. Okay, so obviously if they have an email registered with the account, that would help. If they have a uh, static IP address, that's a good, good way to do it. And um, what other than that, um, what like uh, a transaction history, if they have a record of their own transactions? Sorry, <laughs> you, are you, you guys cutting out. Are you having trouble hearing us? Some, yeah, just kind of blips in and out sometimes. Oh, so. Okay, that's Skype. I guess you're pretty far away. No, I was saying, so the methods that people can uh, reestablish their accounts. Right. There's something wrong with the volume. Can you guys, can you put the headphones on and check it out? Because they're saying they can't hear. Um, everyone's saying it's too quiet, they can't hear. So <laughs> let's bring up the volume. So while, while they're checking on that, um, so you're saying that um, they can identify themselves with their email address, with a, if they have the same IP address that they've been using, or if they have some sort of uh, documentation to prove who they are. They're saying that's better, the audio is better. Great. Yeah, basically, we ask for proof of the account. If there mm -hmm. is only one person claiming one account, for example, if the password is complex enough, uh, or these kind of things, we will be able to uh, let the people access their account immediately. And uh, if there is many people claiming the same account, we will need to ask for more proof. Mm -hmm. uh, the base ID which will give uh, guide everyone enough time to claim their own accounts, mm -hmm. and we will allow immediately people who have uh, proved their account. So th uh, this is the first issue that you have to deal with is because the passwords have been leaked and the accounts are, are wide open, basically you have to prove the identity of each person who has an account. And uh, someone in the, in the chat room is asking, have you reported this as a crime to the Japanese law enforcement officials? Do we, do we report this as a crime? Yeah, we report this as a crime. Do we report it in Japan? We report this in Japan to the GPCERT. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I don't remember exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, computer I got emergency something team, I don't remember exactly, but. Okay. Uh, and we report it to a security provider, which is Prolexic in US, which has direct contact with the FBI and other agencies around the world to wow. handle this case. Have they, have they responded to you? Have they, what, what's, have they given you any status or update or what their plans are to, uh, what they're going to do about well, this? The main plan right now is to leave the server, which was put in the hack data as it is right now. Mm -hmm. So we are putting priority and setting up the new system and migrating all the data mm -hmm. and we will not change anything to the data on the old uh, server. Okay. So, so uh, and so what you're doing is you're going to, cr you're c creating a new server and you're going to leave the old server intact for any investigative purposes, is that what you're saying? And basically, we keep the actual server as it is, so we make sure the logs and everything is still available. Mm -hmm. And we, anyway, we don't want to keep using the old system since it's been proved to not be very really secure. Right. So we will roll out the new system we've been working on for the past weeks directly this week. Right. Okay. So I don't know if, if the audience is understanding, but um, I'll just repeat what you're saying is that you are keeping the old system intact because um, in case there are, um, for investigative purposes, to keep it preserved in its current state, and you're creating a new system, and also because it's been proven, obviously, that it's been um, migrate, or what do you call it, um, compromised, and that it's not safe. So you, what, what measures have you taken on the new system that you've done to make sure that it's absolutely clean and, and safe? Uh, well, the first thing we need to know is the old system was created by the previous owner, I think, uh, 
uh, Mangos, which is uh, not really a developer. It's more like, well, he did this at first, things were working fine, uh, but there is a lot of problems with the system, especially with the increasing load. So mm -hmm. as we could see, there are some times trades cannot be done because of the trade in progress, those kind of things. Uh, the new system was written from scratch with absolutely no code from the old system and is made using uh, best uh, well, state-of-the-art uh, technique. <laughs> <laughs> Techniques, yeah, yeah. A little, little bit more skill uh, from yeah. the developer putting, putting, mm. putting into it. So. Yeah. Okay. You're building it there in-house? Or yeah, it's built in house. Mm -hmm. And um, they're asking, uh, will there be an audit log? A what? Audit log. Uh, yeah, there will be audit logs on various uh, security features. We also plan to ask an external auditor to test the security of the new system as soon as possible, preferably before we open it, mm -hmm. uh, to make sure everything is fine. Okay, mm -hmm. and when they're asking, when will the claim site be available? Well, as I said, we want to do this this week. This week, okay. So we are putting the maximum to do this right now. Okay. Uh, there is also something else which should be not updated. It's the current, the new, new system uh, is PCI DSS compliant too. PCI D, D, DSS. DSS compliant, okay. The security standard defined by the uh, payment card industry, uh, which provide various rules to make them something more secure. Mm-hmm, okay. Did Mt. Gox keep transaction logs all along? Mm -hmm. Do we keep transaction logs? Yeah, all? we will keep transaction logs. Okay. And, there, and are, are, um, who are you going to allow to have access to the original server for the investigation besides just the authorities? Will it be, will it be publicly uh, available? Or? Stupid lag. <laughs> Okay, so we will not allow direct access to the old server. We keep it for to be able to provide logs on uh, information for the investigation. Mm -hmm. But any access to this system will need to go through us. Okay. Okay. Now um, they want to know who has certified PCI compliance. Mm -hmm. Who has certified PCI? Like who's the? Oh, the uh, it's a Japanese company which is working on this. It's a certified. Uh, ACQ. Uh, Out of Japan, no? Yeah, it's in Japan. Mm -hmm. Okay. How and how many um, bitcoins have been stolen from Mt. Gox in this incident? Do you know? How many bitcoins have been stolen? Well, there is two things. There are people who have withdrawn bitcoins from their account because they bought, and we will cancel. Those, well, those trades will not be executed again. Mm -hmm. So those people will end with a negative balance. But since they will not be able to withdraw before they correct the balance, they wouldn't. I don't think it's a problem anyway on this side. On the other side, we have accounts who were created for the purpose of buying bitcoins by the hackers. Uh, but those accounts were not able to withdraw more than one or two hundred bitcoins yet before we close the system. So, what would the what do you what do you have an estimate of what you think the total number of bitcoins that could, were actually taken out? As the actual number of bitcoins which are taken out is uh, under 2,000 bitcoins, under which 2000. we can still cover anyway if we need to. Mm -hmm. And the uh, total number of bitcoins the hackers have been taking out after doing the trade is much lower. Okay. Yeah, 100, 200. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, um, the, uh, st what's your opinion about, I mean, wh what do you have to say about Kevin, um, Kevin Day in Chicago, who's the person who's uh, saying that he, he received, um, well, he's the one actually who benefited from <laughs> being able to buy uh, so many Bitcoins at a penny a piece. He's, you know, approximately $5 million worth of Bitcoin at, at a penny a piece. What, what, yeah. um, what are you going to work out with Kevin? What do you think is uh, your t stance on that? Well, that's a bit difficult question right now. We have uh, facts which are limited. We know he logged in before the attack, bought a lot of bitcoins. Mm -hmm. uh, for now, we don't know exactly what happened, so we have, uh, we asked the investigators to look into this too. Uh, but basically, anyway, 
there is no rule on MTGOX which says we cannot uh, cancel trades. So we do not plan on doing this again, or we don't plan on doing it, but in this case, we have no real choice. Mm -hmm. We need to cancel those trades. Now, who, there's, there's been a lot of speculation in the forums I've, I've been hearing about today, uh, you know, conspiracy theories and everything else. But um, some people are saying that they've done, you know, the forensics on the um, blockchain, and they are they sus they think some people think that um, the account that was hacked that had so many funds in it was actually your account, a Mt. Gox account. Is is what do you have to say about that? Is that true? Uh, <laughs> it's not really something I can comment about right now, since the investigation is still in progress. Um, anyway, okay. we cannot. Uh, give information about who did a trade with who. Okay, and um, I mean, were there, um, was it just one account that was actually selling during this attack or was it multiple accounts? Now the whole sale may, was made by one account. One big sale transaction was from one account. Mm. But you can't tell us who. It wasn't Bill Gates. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think we would know if Bill Gates was using bitcoins anyway. Yeah, I think so. The, the price would go way up, right? All right, so, um, but you can't comment on who it was, and they're not coming forward, obviously. Um, the, uh, the, I well, mean... Well, you mentioned that it was an IP address in Hong Kong, right? Right. That's all we know. Well, it was, no, it was an IP address in Hong Kong that was, that was, that had hacked in, is that right? The hacker was were they in Hong Kong? A Hong Kong IP address that actually uh, what? Yeah, IP we saw was in Hong Kong, but it's most likely a proxy or something. So right. Yeah, it doesn't mean they're in Hong Kong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Just like Satoshi is in Japan. Someone so. keeps asking in the chat room: uh, Can users identify themselves via drive mappings when making claims? Drive mappings. <laughs> I don't know. They keep asking. I don't know why they keep asking. No, I don't think that makes any sense. <laughs> so um, let's see, what, what else do people want to know? The, I mean, people are, okay, so the idea is you're going to set up, um, let's see, as a, you know, which Bitcoin addresses stolen Bitcoin were sent to. So do you know what Bitcoin addresses stolen Bitcoins were sent to? Yeah, we know the Bitcoin addresses. We are trying to make a full list so mm -hmm. we can let other exchanges know about this. You're going to publish that for, peop for the public to uh, kind of research it, help research it? Well, there's a specific uh, channel of communication between exchanges that will allow us to provide this information to uh, other exchanges first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's see, what other questions do we have? Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to set up a, um, a claim site where you can actually identify yourself as the account owner. You're going to force them to reset their passwords, and then everything is going to appear the way it did before the hack. Exactly. So it's effectively the same, same result as a rollback, but it's just actually a new system that you're not going to include these new transactions in. Basically, it's the same idea, but a no new, more secure system. And... What are you, um, is, is Mt. Gox taking a, a loss by doing this uh, besides the time that you've been off trading? Mm, not really. Uh, we're not really taking a loss, but what we will do is to provide uh, extra security filter to every affected user. We plan on sending for free for every user affected a one-time password uh, device, which we are currently working on, which will protect withdrawals, trades, and if the users want, even the login part. So, uh, can you explain that again? What, what kind of a device is it? Yeah, it's uh, what we call a one-time password. It's a small device which provides password, which change every minute. Oh, and that's like a physical device, an electronic okay. device that you're going to offer? Mm. That'll be optional, right? Yeah, that will be optional, but people who have been affected and want it will be able to get it for free. Oh, okay. All right. And uh, how many people uh, 
actually purchase bitcoins besides Kevin Day? How many people purchase bitcoins at you think at, you know an unfairly reduced rate that are going to be uh, very disappointed about this uh, rollback? So how many people bought in at say yeah. like one cent or really? Well, we need to make the exact computation, but we had like uh, three thousand trades we are going to cancel. Well, we're not going to continue take on the new system. Uh, and most were done by some same people, so it's difficult to say right now exactly how many accounts were affected, but mm -hmm. I would say something close to 500 or 1,000. Okay. And you're, um, you're not going to try and prosecute Kevin Day, are you? Prosecute who? Kevin, Kevin Day. Day. No. no. Uh, we will not prosecute anyone anyway, as long as we don't have uh, hard proof. Mm -hmm. We will, however, as an investigation to look into this too. Right. And, uh, uh, and on the other hand, aside from prosecuting, do you, have any, um, um, do you have any plans to compensate him at all for, at least for his inconvenience of uh, having had a transaction that was completed, you know, successfully according to the system and then have it reversed? Obviously, that... Uh, hurts people's trust in the system, you know, needless to say, but um, are you have any offer to compensate him, you know, just for his trouble, his inconvenience, so that he doesn't, um, you know, I don't know, so he doesn't feel too cheated. So are we gonna, are we gonna compensate him? I, I don't, I don't think we're gonna, I don't know if we can answer that right now because there's yeah. gonna be an investigation going on anyway, so, uh -huh. um, you know, it, it's not another question to say that we, we won't, um, but you never know. So we'll leave that open and just see what they find and okay. address it later if we can. Okay. And um, what about the, um, the accusations or claims or whatever that people had, or the hacker had complete access to the system for three days? There are rumors of that. Is, that, is there any truth to that? Still under, invest under investigation too, so. Yeah. So yeah, so okay, that's gonna come out later. All right. So what do you? Where does this leave the customers of Mount Gox? What do you? What do you want to say to uh, Mount Gox customers? Maybe I should leave this. <laughs> uh, definitely. I'm sorry. Um, you know, I think uh, I, we. In the in the days leading up to this, you know, there was uh, there was a lot of people reporting that there's uh, issues with their accounts and things like that. We get that a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess, uh, you know, really in, in hindsight, uh, we did what we could at the time, but we were resource tied. Um, you know, maybe I'm not sure if Mark wants to comment, but yeah. I'm not sure if, you know, we've looked into maybe the next time if, if we need usernames and, and emails encrypted, if that's something that's possible. but. You know, we do. We're obviously sorry, and we're we're gonna try and make up for it however we can, mm -hmm. and make sure it will not never happen again. Hmm. Mm -hmm. right. And what about um, you know? Pe a lot of people are asking about terms of service that um, you know these kinds of rules haven't been set uh, in advance, so that you know people don't know that a, tr a rollback is even within the realm of possibility. Um, are you going to change terms of service and really uh, explain clearly what the, especially things like the, uh, you know, with the withdrawal limits and the, um, the idea that a rollback could happen, um, you know, are, are you going to come up with better communication for the, uh, you know, the customer to see ahead of time and communicate with them ahead of time what the, the policies are? I know that they're evolving, a lot of things are changing. You're <laughs> obviously, you're trying to keep up with the technology end of it. But how about uh, documenting what the policies are in advance in the terms of service or somehow in a clear, concise way so that uh, users are not surprised? Yeah, uh, the main thing we had is like, we've been working on the terms of service for two months. Right now, there is no terms of service, basically, uh, the user is only the user, and we can do what we want because we don't have any terms of service or anything. <coughs> which is pretty nice for users anyway. So we are working on this. Uh, it's been like one or two months. We've got lawyers fighting on this because uh, even the Bitcoin status itself is not uh, clearly defined in the law. 
so there's been a lot of work on this. It's not finished yet. Mm. Um, I will try to get this finished as soon as possible. In the meantime, what was the... Ah, it goes. How was that, right, for the question? <laughs> no, I was. I have something else to say, but I just... <laughs> mm -hmm. your mind. Well, if you think of it, you can, you can uh, come back, jump back in if you remember. The, um, the question, uh, we've got a lot of questions, obviously. Um, can you guarantee that people's dollars and bitcoins will be there when they're able to log in? Yes. You will. Okay, so you want to tell the customers that not to worry, not to panic. When they are able to log in and prove their identity that they own the account, they, their dollars and bitcoins will still be there. They'll still be able to um, uh, withdraw them. And what about, um, let's see, the, are they still going to have the same withdrawal limits? Is it $1,000 a day and um, $10,000 a month? Yeah. Those will yeah, still be in yeah, place? Yeah, for, for, uh, policies will stay the same. Um, okay. We base that just because we're in Japan, so uh, nothing's changed there. Okay. And also, what about, um, okay, we, we said if they have an email address on file, that's one thing, if they have an IP address, but what if they d have no email address identifying their account and they have no IP address, then the only way they're going to be able to withdraw their funds is if they send you, so I mean, how can they identify themselves beyond that? If their IP address isn't there and their email address isn't there, how can you identify them? We can still identify them from the previous deposits or withdrawals. Like, for example, if they did a deposit through the Liberty Reserve, they can send a message through Liberty Reserve, which we can verify came from the same account. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing for, uh, well, for Duala, we can also do a few checks. Mm -hmm. Like, ask them to deposit, like, one cent and put a message with uh, their account name or something. Mm -hmm. And for Euro transfers, we have their name when they do deposits too. And same thing for the Canadian, uh, Australian deposits. So we can verify the identity based on those kind of informations. This sounds like a nightmare project for you guys because it's some yeah. more than 60,000 users. And is it just the right. two of you who are going to do this manually to verify those people? We try to make this automatic as much as possible. <laughs> uh, we've got separate secure database with all the deposits informations, mm -hmm. which uh, are secure. So. It's a safe query system, but we can make inquiries like we are provide a transaction ID and a name on the database reply if it's matching or not. Okay. So for this kind of thing, we should be able to automate this as much as possible. And I hope so. <laughs> Hello, people with no email, but we've got a secure password to re get access back to the account. Mm -hmm. So basically, if the password is complex enough, containing symbols, uh, letter, lowercase, uppercase, numbers. 20 characters or something. They've got a lot of users which are like this. They will be able to get access to the account immediately. Oh, that's nice. Uh, one question about, uh, like, how many accounts are you going to have to verify before you initiate trading? Uh, it's probably oh. not going to be number of accounts, but we'll, gi we'll give time to everyone to get the account reclaimed. So we're probably going to give, like, uh, two, three, four days maybe. Okay. So, so everyone will be able to reclaim the account, and if we have processed enough uh, claims, we'll be able to open trading again. More questions from the chat room. They're asking, what about the people who made withdrawals from Algox during the actual hack? Um, are they going to get to just keep those Bitcoins for free? Or are you going to ask for them to return them? Uh, we will not ask them to return the withdrawals, but if the amount of funds they have on their account is negative, they will not be able to resolve anymore until they solve the negative balance. Wow, they can overdraw their Mt. Gox account. That is, yeah. this is uh, modern banking. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to charge them an NSF fee? No, I hope not. <laughs> oh, NSF fees, no. No NSF fees, that's good. Oh, thank God for that. Okay, and w they're saying, um, you know, what about the rumors that um, Mt. Gox wallet was compromised? Is, is there any truth in that? Yeah. None. In fact, we've got the, removed all the bitcoins to a specific uh, secure location in the safe. Mm -hmm. And we know all the coins are there on safe, so there is no problem. So when you, there, uh, there was a, a large transfer that um, we were talking about last night 
um, Adam, is it Adam, right? Yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> Adam mentioned, and um, that the, what you were saying was a, to move Bitcoin out of Mt. Gox, that was not all of the Bitcoins that were in Mt. Gox, was it? Now we already got some coins which are already in secure locations. We only, only moved the Bitcoins which were online. The online excess. Yeah. Okay, excess, email, uh, excess Bitcoins that you didn't need to have online. Okay, so that move to take them offline, wh did that happen during the actual hack or before no, or it after? No, it didn't the attack. Sorry? When we saw those things were not secure, uh, since we do not have enough information at this time, the first thing we did is to move all the coins to a secure location. Oh, so you saw the attack was happening and the first thing you did was move the, secure, the coins to a secure location? Well, the first thing we did was to stop uh, the website. Mm -hmm. The second thing we did was to move the coins. Mm, so you, st you stopped trading and then you moved the coins. So that's how, how this happened right away. Wow, okay. It happened at 3.17 in the morning here in Japan. I got a phone call waking me up. Mm. I take the thing, I saw it was a mess. So first thing we did was stop the site to prevent withdrawals on trading and then we check what happened. And if you're, um, if it's just the two of you, how do you monitor this when you're sleeping? Because when you're asleep normally, uh, if, assuming that you have some sleep there, you, um, mm. are you able to, uh, how do you monitor this in the middle of the night? Well, we have people in Europe and in the US who are monitoring too on whichever way to call us. At any, well, call me anyway at any time of day or night. Any, so they can just call you and wake you up any time of the day or night? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let, let me just take a break really quick right now because uh, we do want to thank our sponsors. <laughs> our sponsors uh, that, uh, you know, allow us to be here. Um, first, Ambivert Creative. Uh, it's A-M-B-I-V-E-R-T creative.com. Ambivert creative.com accepts Bitcoin and they create your corporate identity for you. They'll help you design your website, your logo, your stationery, uh, everything to make you look like a real Fortune 400 company, even if it's just a homemade website. <laughs> You've got a shopping cart or whatever, um, they'll make you look first class and professional. And also Bitcoin Bonus, bitcoinbonus.com is an amazing site that uh, will actually pay you back in Bitcoins uh, just for shopping online at all the places that you shop online anyway. So when you shop online, uh, go to BitcoinBonus.com first and check out the links. They've even got uh, Best Buy and all of the major, major Buy.com buy and all the major retailers and they're all there, whether it's web hosting or whatever it is. Uh, go to BitcoinBonus.com, they'll give you a kickback in, in Bitcoins, which is awesome. BlueCanaryNightlight.com, check it out. You're just gonna love this little Blue Canary <laughs> Nightlight. It sounds so goofy, but you know, the fact is it's really cool and they accept Bitcoin, so support them. BlueCanaryNightlight.com and thanks to uh, all of them, we're here. And also TradeHill.com, the new kids on the block uh, that are, uh, you know, helping uh, stabilize the Bitcoin world because I don't think anybody wants only one, um, we want only one TV, but we don't want only one <laughs> exchange site. <laughs> so um, TradeHill is the first to say, that they're, they're kicking in their support for Mt. Gox. They, they don't, you know, they want only the best for Mt. Gox. And they're very supportive of the entire Bitcoin community. I think everybody is. Everybody's intentions, uh, except for the hacker, of course, um, are good. And so uh, that's tradehill.com. We thank them for their support to, to make this show possible. So um, the next question is coming in. What about the making all the Mt. Gox addresses public so everyone can check that Mt. Gox does not practice fractional reserve banking? The idea of full disclosure, uh, making it transparent so that um, you know we know where the where the money is and how much money there is and and all that. How do you feel about that? Transparency. Right. Yeah, the problem is lots of people who don't want uh, this. So we've been working on the system that would, well, I'm not sure if it's the right time to announce it anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe it is. We've been working on a system that would work on parallel of Mangox, uh, which would allow decentralized trading. It's uh, somewhat based on the Bitcoin system. It uses the same system of chain, except uh, basically people emit transactions which are 
orders which are stay, which stay open. Other people emit transactions for completing these orders. On miners will record transactions and store them in the chain. Uh, the whole system is still being developed here. We'll be needed to put this on hold for a while until we fix uh, our site. Uh, but that's one of the projects we've been working on, which would solve a lot of things. And because all transactions and all uh, assets are visible in the chain, it will be much more open for everyone to see what's happening. So it will be decentralized and yes. still operated as not box or who would Basically, operate? when someone wants to put money on this system, they need to give the money to an exchanger like Mangox, mm -hmm. which will emit uh, money on this system, which will be signed by Mangox. So any buyer which trusts Mangox will be able to uh, trade with these people and get their money back from Mangox on their buy or sell. Ah, wow. So the whole idea is we will allow other trading platforms to also emit funds with their own signature. And if people trust this company too, they will be able to see those trades and get money from them too. Okay. So um, obviously the question most people want to know right now is when will uh, the site be back up that people can actually log in? Uh, we're seeing this for this week. This week? Okay. Yeah. So Probably the end of the week. Like, anyway, we'll announce the opening of trades at least 24 hours before it happens so everyone can get ready. Right. Uh, what we're doing is this, like, we're planning to do it right now, but we will open the claim site so everyone will be able to place claims for their account and get back access to their accounts. Um, once everyone got a chance, and we will give a few days for people who want to do this through notary or something to get back to their account, uh, we will open back trading. So yeah, because if they if they need to uh, notarize documents and send them to Tokyo and so on, they're going to need uh, someone who needs to do that is going to require more time. Yeah, than it's take two like days based on past experience. So they get the notarized copy, they send through FedEx, DHL, or anything. And it gets here in less than two days. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so will you be uh, <laughs> still holding to uh, what you said on your website as far as when you open up the $17 starting bids? Well, uh, the thing we will do for this, we will see the price of Bitcoin based on other exchanges. Um, only uh, put buys up to the best amount. So we will restore all the buys which are cleared by the huge sell-off by the hacker, mm -hmm. and we will restore buys which up to a defined amount. But will the, when you reopen, will the order book be empty? Will all the order orders be cancelled? And or how how will you just in, like seed it when you first open again? Yeah. So. If you had an open order before the attack, will you still have an open order? Mm, yeah, if you had an open order, it will still be an open order if it's still uh, close enough to Bitcoin. Unless when you claim, you have an, op you have an option to cancel all your open orders too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then a question from the chat room. Um, is Mavox cooperating with authorities on Silk Road or any other suspected illicit activity? We have not been contacted by any authority at this point by anyone anyway. We know Silk Road have been doing things. Uh, since we are a company, we are legally obliged to comply to anything that will be required to us, but there is nothing required at this point. We never heard anything from anyone. And just to add on top of that, when we do, um, we're being very clear, you know, we'll vet those through our lawyers. Um, we're not just going to go willy-nilly and uh, and pull logs and stuff like that. We have to make sure it's, you know, we're legally obligated obligated to. Um, yeah, so. Mm. Okay, so you're, you haven't been contacted by any authorities yet, and, but are, you're, but you are planning. Hold on, I hit my hand, can you hear me? If we are contacted by any authority, we will check the, if this authority is indeed authority, to make this request with our lawyers. Um, well, make sure everything is in order before answering anything. Okay, and is it, are you going to cooperate with any authorities, at whatever government, whether it's Japan or the US or um, any governments well, at all? 
any request needs to be approved by the court of Tokyo. So they need to make an international request and get the Japanese government to agree. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right. And uh, and then you're assume, assuming that it is uh, approved by the court of Tokyo, then you're gonna you're gonna uh, go along with that and uh, give them whatever information that they that they request. Yeah. I get. You know. Um, I would assume that if you know, it's approved by the, the courts here that we have to mm, yeah, yeah. comply. Mm. I mean, unless <laughs> we yeah. want to go to jail, so, which yeah. I don't think we do. No. Right. Now, the, let me ask you, the withdrawal limits that you have in place now that, that are 1,000 per day and 10,000 per month without having identity, is that to comply with um, some Jap Jap Japanese law or U.S. law or what? Uh, it's Japanese laws which concerns the international cooperation on, on money laundering mm. so basically Japanese laws which are made to comply with uh, international cooperation which include 40 countries including US most countries in Europe uh, about money laundering mm -hmm. okay how do you think this whole event is going to affect Mount Gox as a business and, and uh, the community's trust in Mount Gox how do you think this will affect us going forward and trust in the in in what we do? And yeah, it's difficult to say for right now. Yeah, I mean, hopefully, hopefully we can win back any trust that we've lost. Um, yeah. You know, I don't doubt that a lot of people are um, maybe going to go to other exchanges in the in the interim, but you know, um, try and learn from our mistakes and uh, make it better. Okay, and someone is asking, can we close our open orders before trading begins? Yeah, when you claim back your account, there will be a checkbox to ask for all open orders to be closed. Oh, okay. So if you check it at the same time, the orders will not be kept. Okay. And someone's asking if we can clarify, is the account claiming page going to be live today? Um, uh, because we were talking about wanting to launch it now or looking for clear confirmation on the time when that claiming page will be ready and, and live. Yeah, is it going to be live today? Yeah. It, should have been live during the interview, but I cannot be at two places at the same time. We keep interrupting you, right? Yeah, right now, it yeah. would have been live if we weren't taking yeah. your time right now. Okay, so it's like really soon, as soon as you're able to finish it. And you're almost finished, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then you're gonna, that account claiming page, it's gonna be up there for several days before trading begins. So there'll be plenty of time for people to claim their account stop their open orders and even if they have to certify documentation and all that before you open for trading again is that right so how how are we how are we going to decide how long we're going to leave it up mm. the uh, the claim site oh the claim site will stay open after uh, the site is back we'll leave it open for probably uh two three four weeks and then we will include the claim system in the mongox uh website Mm -hmm. So even if in the future we have other accounts we are potentially uh, hacked, we will block those accounts and put them for claim. Mm -hmm. So people will be able to provide proof and claim their account back if they're as a proper owner. But two or three weeks, you're going to have it up two or two or three weeks before trading begins? or Because you were saying that trading will begin this week. You're hoping that trading will begin within a week. So uh, we will open the page today, mm -hmm. like in 30 minutes or one hour. Okay. But, um, people will start making claims. Mm -hmm. uh, first, people should get back their account today, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, if people cannot get uh, enough proof, they can send uh, proof which should be here. Like they get it uh, certified Tuesday, they send it Tuesday evening. It's here by, well, Friday at work. So. Mm -hmm. I think it may be smart to wait and see like you know we want a good amount of users if yeah. if something goes wrong or uh, you know a lot of people have got to be doing manual requests it might back things up um, obviously we're hiring we're trying to get people in here to help us so um, but we want to get trading back up as soon as, as soon as possible yeah okay someone's asking um, in the uh, chat room regularity is saying will there be a stop loss function before the reboot uh, he says we need this for market confidence you know what it means, like uh, some sort of a, a safety um, uh, system that will automatically monitor in case the, the market crashes yeah. too fast again. Will that be included in the, in the reboot? Yeah, we 
planning on a system that will prevent uh, such case. So if the market moves really a lot, uh, the system will send me an automatic call to wake me up if I'm not up and mm. check on things and will freeze uh, pending orders. Since the new system has a uh, order execution queue, it will be possible. Well, first the uh, message we add on the old system setting in order it pro will not happy anymore. And it would be much smooth when executing your orders. Mm -hmm. So, you, I'm not sure if I understood. So, if this the system was just going to alert you and you're going to manually have to look at it and freeze the uh, activity and check yeah. into the status? Is, it won't be completely automated then, it's just going to alert you? Well, if there is really something wrong going on, the system will stop the training and alert me, or if I can get other people to do this too, uh, maybe anyone can do this. Mm -hmm. okay. And have you ever considered uh, like not doing it 24-7, just to kind of like help you catch up or help in any way? Have you ever considered not doing it 24-7? <laughs> no, we thought about it, but the problem is, since we are doing trading worldwide, if we choose a time to stop, uh, it's going to affect right. some people in a bad way, some people in a good way. So we cannot do a fair stop or anything. Mm -hmm. So um, and what, do you, what about the DDoS attack? So there's still a lot of uh, talk about that. What do you, what have you done to prevent them? I mean, I know that was a, a difficult well, situation. For the attacks, we now use uh, one of the biggest DDoS protectors which exists out there, which is called Prolexic. Uh, they protect sites like uh, Visa.com and other sites. Mm -hmm. And got quite a good, lot of experience uh, protecting sites from DDoS attacks. Mm -hmm. And... Um, the, do, you, who, do you have any idea who is behind it? Yeah, who is behind it? Uh, the DDoS. Uh, the DDoS? Well, we know who is behind some of the DDoS, but not all. And even if I say who, I don't know exactly where. Like, for example, the first DDoS we had, uh, we had an anonymous uh, email from a Russian, well, potentially a Russian guy who asked us to send money to a Liberty Reserve account. Really? He asked, know. like, he was. He was uh, Asking you to send money to prevent the DDoS attack? Like extorting yeah, it from it you? Asking to send money to stop the attacks. Wow. So still what we did is to move to a cheap DDoS protecting host provider, mm -hmm. which works quite nicely. Mm -hmm. um, but we had some troubles with larger DDoS with this provider. So we moved to Prolexic, which is a much uh, better solution. Mm -hmm. Okay. and. Uh, do you? Th someone's asking. Uh, jiggled again. <laughs> Funny name. Says, do you think that reopening the site will cause another crash as people sell and transfer their money from Mt. Gox out of fear? Do you think that's going to cause uh, a crash? I think. Uh, do you think it's going to crash when we open it back up? I don't think so. <laughs> it will go probably lower for a while at least. Mm -hmm. But we should not forget that there have been some deposits too that are currently uh, frozen. So either those people will uh, withdraw again, mm -hmm. or since they're from here anyway, they may buy too. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we cannot predict exactly what people will do, but right. I don't think it will crash that much. Yeah, and the um, the the website for the for the claims are are we going to uh, announce it now, or are you going to wait and then uh, they'll see it on MountGox.com? Where, where will it be? Are we going to announce it now, or do you want to um, wait until it's what, complete? The claim, site. Oh, the claim site will be on uh, claim.mtgox.com. <clears throat> you can put that up. Okay. So, uh, it's not here yet. We're not working yet. on this, but it will be here <laughs> soon. If you're watching live, not yet. Soon. 30 minutes to an hour. Give them uh, uh, you know, time to finish this interview and then finish the page. But it's uh, https colon slash slash claim without an S. Just claim dot mountgox.com, is that right? No. Okay, and uh, let's see. I can't see this when I can withdraw. My... When can I withdraw? <laughs> okay, will, oh. they, will people be able to withdraw their funds as soon as they're able to log in? Will they be able to withdraw? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. As okay. soon as we verify, verify the claims, 
uh, we will allow people to withdraw their codes and get everything back if they want to. Okay. So as long as they had an email address registered to their account, they should be able to claim it immediately and log right uh, in? Not really. No? Even if they have an email address, since we cannot verify if the email was uh, compromised or not, mm. we still require some more proof in most yeah, cases. Okay. Yeah. All right. And so uh, does Mt. Gox fear a legal crackdown on Bitcoins as a currency? <laughs> Do we fear a legal crackdown on <laughs> Bitcoins? Well, the operation we are doing in Japan is fully legal. We've got uh, lawyers which take this and we do not have any problem with Japanese law. Uh, the problem with good A is we may require to be registered from Japan to the 40 something United States states. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because which we are you, you looking have to... into, but this is mainly a problem because we have customers there. Even if the United States is not happy with this, they cannot do much. Mm -hmm. so, but I mean, if you're operating, like if you have customers within the United States, um, aren't you bound by this, those same laws uh, as, a, as a business that's operating within the United States or no? Don't we fall under American laws because we've got customers there? No, that's a bit difficult. By Japanese laws, we only fall under Japanese laws, but by US laws, there are some laws which apply to us, even if we are not in US. Mm -hmm. So since right now uh, we are mainly, well, we are based in Japan, and I don't have much knowledge of the US laws. Uh, we have lawyers looking into this. We will try to comply as much as possible without compromising our users privately. Mm -hmm. So okay. anyway, we're working on this right now. Okay. Someone's asking, what about the uh, to lock the exchange rate within certain limits, for example, not to sell lower than $10. Do you think that's a good idea or a bad idea to, to artificially um, kind of force the market to within a certain price, especially with the relaunch of everything? Yeah, I understand. I don't think we have any authority to lock the market to something. Yeah. That makes sense. I mean, it's a free market. That's the whole idea, right? Mm -hmm. um, do you see any reason? Uh, someone's asking. I guess this is just total speculation, but they're saying they want to know if you know if you can think of any reason behind the recent run-up in prices from eight dollars to thirty dollars a bitcoin at one point. Uh, mm -hmm. What did? It, what did? What do you have any speculation on why it went from eight dollars to thirty dollars? Uh, well, it's <laughs> probably mostly due to news coverage, both in U.S. and in Europe. News, all of those interviews I've been doing, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, are someone's asking, are you the only two employees that are working there? Well, we've been uh, looking for new employees and did a lot of interviews before we had the forum anyway. Mm -hmm. And there are people we are plan to start soon. Mm -hmm. We did have a, another person that yeah. was supposed to start, but if you can imagine, they didn't think Bitcoin was very stable, so they uh, <laughs> they wouldn't yeah. sign the contract. So it's been really it's been really difficult for us to get people in Japan um, yeah. that we can trust. Obviously, trust is paramount. Um, yeah. So we want to have people here that can work out of the office. We've had a lot of people offering their their expertise from abroad, but uh, obviously that you know we don't want to we don't want to tread down that path right now. So. So if any, uh, uh, if any uh, technical people are interested in uh, living and working in Tokyo, Japan, they should contact you. What kind of skills are you looking for right now? For right now, the email bins have been kind of yeah. what we need the most. And then obviously, I'm not sure on the development end if yeah. Mark's looking for much. Uh, we're looking for mainly right now uh, people who can reply emails in English. Because we've All been getting a lot English. of emails on much more than we were expecting and so we've been hiring more people but the mm -hmm. problem is the number of emails have been growing faster than we've been able to hire. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah, Mark, consequently Mark's had, you know, he hasn't had enough time to, to work on the site and, yeah. and those kind of things that are more important really um, letting us get to email. So, mm -hmm. yeah. and so someone's asking, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, so we, are, we are looking for development staff, the, mm -hmm. the gentleman that we told you about that didn't you know, right. didn't want to work with us, um, was potentially someone we wanted to have developed. So if you're working in Japan and, you know, you're legally allowed to be here, please give us your mm -hmm. resume. 
Okay. Someone's asking, and this is an important question I can't believe I forgot to ask. Who stole the database? So what connection does it have to the flash crash? The, uh, the, you know, I mean, if it was a brute force attack to get in, to, to hack into one account, how did they access the whole database and, um, and, and why would they steal it and then why would they publish it? Any, any theories on that? For the lulls? No, the, the oh, for the lulls, oh, okay. okay. Yes, the lulls, that's a Japanese word for those watching. Yeah, it means for the, just for laughs, you think, mm -hmm. huh? Really? Just for laughs? No, I mean, so is it, is that the, the, the story is that the auditor's um, personal computer was somehow stolen or compromised and he had a read-only copy of that database that had all the login information and encrypted passwords in it and, and somebody, somebody must have known that that had value. It's almost, you know what I mean? Somebody must have known that what he was working on. It's very strange, right? Wait, can you tell us what uh, I mean, can you tell us the company that was that was doing this audit? Well, while the investigation is in progress, and we are seeing, seeing, checking with our lawyers how we will sue them and what kind of thing we will ask from them. So we've been advised not to really mention yeah. any any names right now while this goes okay. on. Um, and you you did mention that it was off site. It wasn't someone in the office. Can you tell us what country that firm was in? <laughs> what can you can you elaborate on what country it was in? Probably, <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Yeah. Uh, I don't know exactly what I can say, so I better yeah. not say too much. I know I'm pressing you. Get an official <laughs> statement. I'm, I'm anyway, uh, it was the only uh, place that could access the database in, from outside here. So oh. we've closed it. We say told them we were not happy and that we will follow with appropriate lawsuits. Mm -hmm. Uh, we make sure this never happens again. Right. And when so, some people are asking these crazy questions, but um, it was offered, the database was offered for sale apparently. Did you know that it was offered for sale when that first appeared? Hmm? Um, I think they're uh, talking the database? about the, yeah. the database itself uh, was offered for sale. Basically, our database is for sale uh, every week for two, two, three, five months. We've got a lot of, like, Lots of people claim they use the database, take money, and do not deliver anything. It's not something new, so <laughs> okay. no wonder we didn't take it seriously this time either. So. Someone was asking if you had, if you had uh, offered to buy it when it became up for sale, but um, that would be pretty silly. Okay. And um, do you know anything about this Bitcoin 7, uh, this new exchange site that sprung up? Do you have any? Uh, Seven. I've seen the URL. I've never went to it. No, I don't know much about Bitcoin 7 right now. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's just in those actions. Okay. Everyone has a chance to create their own action if they want. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, once again, the, uh, the website that they can go to is um, claim, it's https colon slash slash claim dot mtgox dot com. That'll be up within an hour or so. And, um, we appreciate your time so much. Yeah, um, I just wanted to say actually that uh, you guys uh, showing up, you know, on video uh, helps a, a lot way. for the community because I think that the community is going to be very resilient throughout yeah. all this. And uh, yeah, there'll be people that want to go away, but a lot, a lot of people, you know, want to still do business with you. And it's great that you're sh taking the time away from the programming that you need to do to get it all back into place and to be here with us tonight. Um, and also that any business that we've done with you guys in the past has been, you know, great. The responses on email is always good. So Kudos for taking the, the time good, to you know. speak to the community face to face. Yeah, I mean, there's a I lot of good that you're doing, obviously. That's and very is, important. Yes. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, thanks. thank you for that. And speaking about you know the community, maybe I'll give a, a shout out to uh, to Roger Ver. He's uh, he's the owner of Memory Dealers. The guy maybe right. people yeah. remember him from putting up the, uh, the, the bulletin board. Yeah. He's actually in Tokyo, and he was cool enough to uh, to bring some people over here and help us yesterday deal with the emails and everything that was going on. So we've okay. got uh, definitely a good community, and uh, we hope to to serve everyone better in the future. So okay. yes. Thank Sounds you very great. much. Okay, so um, put that URL up on the screen, and we'll thank you guys.
for joining us and um, all the best. Good we'll we'll be in touch. To the sponsors, chat, okay. everything. Oh. We're out of time. All right, so we'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow Bye. at 2 p.m. Eastern. Take care. Right, thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you.